Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about thrombocytopenia. We're going to also go over an approach to how we can determine the cause of thrombocytopenia. So to begin, what is thrombocytopenia? Well, thrombocytopenia is basically a low count of platelets. And what we mean by thrombocytopenia, or a low platelet count, we actually mean less than 150 times 10 to the 9th per liter of blood. Now an average or normal range of platelet count is about 150 to 400. Now the average lifespan of a platelet is about eight to nine days. And thrombocytes themselves are actually cell fragments. They're not actually cells. They do not contain a nucleus. And they're actually derived from megakaryocytes, which are these large cells that are located in the bone marrow. And here's a picture of a megakaryocyte. Now thrombocytes are important in initiating blood clots. And if we have low uh, low counts of platelets or low numbers of platelets, we can uh, see particular signs and symptoms. And some of these include symptoms such as mucocutaneous bleeding. The uh, patients with low uh, numbers of platelets have a proclivity to bruise easily, and they also can get gingival bleeding or bleeding of their gums and their mouth. They also are at risk for epistaxis or nosebleeds. They also have an increased risk for perioperative bleeding. Women with low platelet counts have heavier menstrual bleeding, and they also can be at higher risk for peripartum bleeding. And the signs of thrombocytopenia are mostly dermatological. We see bruising as, again, another sign of thrombocytopenia. We also see petechia, which are small uh, basically red dots on the skin, purpura and ecchymoses, and basically petechia purpura and ecchymoses are the same but uh, different sizes. Now there are four main categories of causes of thrombocytopenia. An easy way to think about this is to think about the total number of thrombocytes in the body represented by this circle here. This is input and this is output. So input is the production of thrombocytes. And again, we said the production comes from megakaryocytes, which are located in the bone marrow. So the first category of causes for thrombocytopenia includes decreased production. So if we decrease the amount of input or amount of production of thrombocytes, this pool, the body pool of thrombocytes actually decreases. Now, before the thrombocytes can reach the um, available pool of thrombocytes in our schematic here, they can be rerouted and sequestered. And um, sequestration is actually the second category of causes of thrombocytopenia. Sequestration basically means that the platelets are being absorbed by something else. And we'll talk about what that is um, in the next couple slides. Another cause is actually increased destruction, increased output of uh, or increased removal of platelets from the um, body um, pool of platelets. So this is represented by increased destruction. So increased destruction is the third main category of causes of thrombocytopenia. And the fourth cause is uh, less um, thought about, but it is actually hemodilution. Hemodilution meaning that when we take a sample of this um, pool of platelets, if it's actually diluted, when we take a sample, it's actually, uh, the concentration is actually less. So when we look at numbers of platelets, it's usually per liter of blood. So we can actually get a diluted sample if the entire pool of platelets has been diluted. So that is another cause of thrombocytopenia. So getting into more in-depth on what are some of the causes inside each of these categories, in the large category of decreased production of thrombocytes, these include nutritional. So cells in order to form require certain nutrients and some of these include b12 so if there's a b12 deficiency it can lead to decreased production of thrombocytes 
Some of them may also include folate deficiency. Congenital causes are also an issue. If there's congenital issues in producing thrombocytes, we can have low thrombocyte counts. These include Fanconi's anemia and Alport's. And there's also issues in the bone marrow. So if megakaryocytes are located in the bone marrow, if there's any issues in the bone marrow or any damage to the bone marrow, we can get decreased thrombocyte counts. These include aplastic anemia, chemotherapy or radiation exposure. These things can suppress the bone marrow. So there's some drug-induced suppression of bone marrow as well or damage to the bone marrow. There's also malignancy if there's any cells that get into the bone marrow and basically invade the bone marrow. There's less room or less ability for the bone marrow to produce megakaryocytes, which lead to less platelets. And there's also conditions such as myelodysplasia that also cause uh, problems in the bone marrow leading to uh, thrombocytopenia. In the second category, we talk about sequestration. This is basically where something absorbs the platelets before they can enter or um, enter the body or they're absorbed from the pool of um, the body's uh, platelets. These basically mean, or sequestration basically means there is splenomegaly. Splenomegaly basically can absorb platelets. So splenomegaly is again an enlargement of the spleen. The spleen can basically hold on to platelets. It can be a source of platelet storage. So they it can sequester the platelets. And splenomegaly can be due to several different um, reasons. One of them can be liver disease. So cirrhosis, there's a backing up of um, venous uh, blood flow into um, the liver, which backs up into the spleen, which causes an enlargement of the spleen. There can be malignancy. So there can be in the large spleen um, due to malignant causes. There can also be myelofibrosis, which leads to splenomegaly. All of these lead to a larger uh, spleen, which lead to increased sequestration of thrombocytes and leads to thrombocytopenia. The third major cause is increased destruction. Increased destruction, again, can be caused by several different factors or many different factors. One of them can be immune. So the, a subcategory in increased destruction is immune, so immune destruction of thrombocytes. Immune causes include ITP, can be viral causes, can be systemic causes, can be alloimmune, so if we have a blood transfusion can lead to alloimmune reactions which lead to destruction of thrombocytes. Can be HIT, HIT, which is heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, it's a antibody um, Basically, antibodies are produced against heparin, which lead to destruction of platelets as well. There's drug-induced uh, immune causes of um, increased destruction of thrombocytes. Non-immune causes can include DIC, or disseminated intravascular coagulation. This is where there are fibrin clots being formed, where they shouldn't be formed, and it leads to a type of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, can also lead to the increased destruction of thrombocytes. Also, TTP is also in that MAHA category. There's also HUS or hemolytic uremic syndrome. Preeclampsia can lead to the, a non-immune mediated destruction of thrombocytes. And then there's also the HELP syndrome, which is basically a worsening of the preeclampsia uh, condition. And there's also APS or antiphospholipid antibody syndrome that can actually uh, increase the destruction of thrombocytes in a non-immune mediated fashion. And then the fourth category is hemodilution. We talked about this before. So these can be from massive transfusions. We give the person a lot of fluids. We can actually dilute their um, thrombocyte count. It can also be from cardiopulmonary bypasses as well. So some considerations with regards to thrombocytopenia include um, an important rule to rule out pseudo-thrombocytopenia or factitious thrombocytopenia. This is where when we take a sample from the patient and we run the tests on the sample, these platelets from some patients have a, a propensity to clump. 
And when they clump, we get a decreased count of the thrombocytes. So it looks like they have thrombocytopenia, but in fact, it's just their platelets are clumping. And an easy way to avoid this is to use sodium citrate tubes instead of EDTA. And some of the treatments, basically, we treat if there's life-threatening bleeding. So that would lead to a platelet transfusion for patients. And some additional small tips, these are just generalizations. They are not meant to be used um, exclusively, but sometimes if we see pancytopenia where there's decreased red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets, we can think of decreased production as a possible cause or sequestration and or hemodilution can be the causes of the thrombocytopenia. So if we think about it, if there's decreased numbers of white, red blood cells and platelets, we can think of perhaps an decreased production. There's um, maybe an infiltrative process in the bone marrow that is um, decreasing the production of uh, these um, cells. Um, hemodilution is also um, makes sense if we dilute um, if we dilute the patient. Basically, we're not diluting just the platelets; we're also diluting red blood cells and white blood cells as well. Another one is if we see thrombocytopenia and anemia. Um, this can lead to the possibility that it is non-immune destruction. There's also isolated thrombocytopenia. When it's isolated thrombocytopenia, think about immune-mediated destruction as a possible cause. And if it's a hospitalized patient, we see thrombocytopenia, think about drugs and infection as possible causes. So heparin-induced, um, it could be some other infections, such as viral infections that could be leading to decreased um, platelet counts in patients. And that was a lesson on thrombocytopenia and the approach to cause of thrombocytopenia. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.